It's also important to recognize that, uh, you know, this downstream side might not pay as well, uh, but it's hard to tell sometimes depending upon what happens when high water hits. So one of the things you want to look at is imagine the water's up almost to the railroad tracks, filling this whole thing. Then all of a sudden this whole area over here looks interesting, but you know what? Now the water's scrubbing up and, and you know, kind of dropping things back in this area in here. So you also have to kind of keep an eye on the possibility that high water creates a very different flow from what you see in lower water. Always important. Imagine the water is flooding. What happens to these boulders? What happens behind them? That's why the, the statement earlier that there might be a pool right back in here that could be very interesting. That's very possible. Suggestion would be to sample the leading edge and this trailing edge of any one of these regions. Uh, <clears throat> knowing that if you get good gold on the leading edge, you want to follow the pay streak and it's likely to go right underneath these boulders or wrap around them in some interesting way, but it's it's going to go through this region. Uh, it can't go into this hard rock wall unless of course there's a load in there. Uh, and it can't and it can't really uh, readily go too close to the wall even. So it's going to be, you know, kind of wrapped around the tip of this, but through the center. <clears throat> and that's the easiest way to find that is to go enter in through this front end here where the gold would just start dropping out. The thing you have to recognize is actually the rocks and boulders are still lighter in their specific gravity than the gold itself. So a small piece of gold will move after a larger rock will. And so uh, big rocks like this are going to indicate that there may be very large gold nuggets trapped underneath them. But you still find out by looking at the leaning edge here and going to bedrock. You gotta get, get your sample hole down into the hole, down into the gravels, into bedrock, and it's likely to be submerged underwater in this area. But that's where you're gonna find the most likely pay streaks. The problem is, see these steep vertical walls? That could easily indicate that bedrock is a long way down. This may look shallow, but I doubt if it is. Um, it just has all the, all the earmarks of, of a deep cut uh, valley. Um, and then these rapids would indicate some shallowing, but it's hard to say how thick the layer of gravel is that filled in to make these rapids. It could be very thick and it could be just caused by some kind of a landslide up here that filled this in at some point in the past and has since been kind of cut away. So keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, those boulders, Bradley says, uh, those boulders were underwater and got there when the water ran faster. I used to photograph creeks, etc. I worked during heavy winter storms so I'd know where the water ran high. Yeah, you're onto something there, Bradley. You want to imagine the water running high because that's the trick. That's how you read a creek. You don't read a creek by where the water is now. You read a creek by where the water is in high flood because that's when the gold moves. You don't really care where it is when the gold isn't moving. You want to know where it is when it's moving because that tells you where it's going to go. Once you figure that out, you can figure out roughly where the pay streak should start. Once you start tracking the pay streak, that's the trick. And we get into that in the course. Um, so 